All right, so before we move on to making that bug scene from Unreal 5, uh, I'm going to do one more uh, example of the proximity node. So I created like this really simple uh, atmosphere simulation. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Okay, so to get started, like this is, this is the basic animation I have. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to create a sphere. Now the basic simulation is pretty straightforward. Okay, so we'll just take a pop network and I'm going to generate 5000 uh, particles and we'll keep it for about uh, a life expectancy of two. And let's give it a little bit of variation. Okay, now the first thing is we'll take a wrangle and attach everything to our object. So I'll come into inputs and I'll keep input one to first context geometry and we'll just set it to, yeah, so we'll just set it to uh, min pos and zero comma at P. Okay, so this will ensure that all of my particles stick to the sphere. Okay, then we just want to do a couple of things. Firstly, I'll take a pop force and I'll keep the swirl size to around one. Amplitude I'll keep to around two or three. And I'm going to lower the roughness. Okay. And we'll also get the pulse length to about five. So if I press play, I should get this. Like it'll just form, you know, basic patterns. Now what I also want is I also wanted to spin along the axis. So I'm going to take an axis force and I'm going to lower the height, increase the radius and then take the outer strength to around 0.3 and get the speed slightly high. So what this will do is it will make sure that the particles sort of spin around like that. See, so it gives you these nice little swirls, but they also sort of spin around. If you want, you can try to make the swirls a little smaller, but just remember something, the more detail you want, the more particles you'll have to keep. And eventually we're going to do like a VDB on top of this. So the more points there are, the slower everything will get. Okay, so which is why I'm just working with about 5,000 particles. Okay, and then lastly, let's just give it a drag. So I'll just give it a drag to kind of slow it down a little bit. Yeah, I think this is good. See, so you'll get like a little more detail. Like if we want, we can give it an alpha. This is just for fun. So I'll just take a pop color and I'll give it an alpha. Okay, so that we can just, you know, see how it looks. Yeah, I can come to the axis force and turn off the guide. See, there you go. So that, that looks pretty decent. Okay, so this is fine. Now, what we want is I want to calculate the distance between these. So I'll just take the proximity node. And I'll get rid of the, the pop color. I don't need that. So this is fine. So let's just jump to the last frame and let it just calculate everything. So we have, you know, this. Okay, so this is our basic simulation. Now let's come back to geometry level. And the first thing I want to do is I want to take a color node and I want to color this based on the nearest distance. And let's get this down to 0 0.02 and, and flip the color. You know, so click on that and it'll flip the, the color. Okay, the one thing I want to do before this, before the color is I want to blur out the nearest distance attribute. Okay, so take a blur, so take an attribute blur and like I'll just copy this. So I'll do control C, this comes to control V. Yeah, and set the influence type to proximity. See, so this will sort of smoothen out the whole thing. And you can set the mode to custom. So we can just sort of, you know, control everything a little bit. Yeah. So what this will do is it will give you a much more smoother result. Okay, now 
Now what we can do is I can transfer this color over to P scale. Okay, so one thing before that is instead of black, get it to like a dark gray. Okay, and now I can take a wrangle and I can just say at P scale is equal to at CD dot R. And I'll just copy a single sphere to this. So we'll do copy to points. Just lower the size. Yeah, and if we press play, we should get something decent. See, just increase it till you're kind of happy with it. Till it sort of blends together. Okay, now what we can do is now, now let's change this into clouds. Okay, so let's keep it here. And the first thing is we'll take a VDB from polygons. This is the node that will take the longest to calculate. Okay, uh, set this to 0 0.02 and then take a smooth. So we want to smoothen out the VDB. So it sort of just blends into this, okay. which is which is nice. But this, this itself will start to slow down. Okay, and then we're going to convert this back into back into polygons. So type in convert. So just take convert VDB and this will be set to polygons. So yeah, so that's what you'll have. And then I want to convert this into clouds. So just take a cloud node. I'll set the uniform samples to about 250. And let me just plug this in. And there you go, you have clouds. Now I won't play this back because it's going to be pretty slow, which is why I had done the flip book. And then what you can do is you can take a cloud noise. Yeah, let's also do one thing. Let's come out and we'll just take a light and I'll set this to, see, there you go. That actually looks pretty decent. And we'll set this to distant and I can, you know, rotate it. Yeah, and I'll hide it. See, so there you go, so that looks pretty decent. But what I want to do is, uh, we'll make a few minor changes. So I want to take the spatial scale down to around 0 0.5. So the noise is smaller. And I want to turn off absolute noise and we'll turn off smooth values as well. There you go. So that looks a little bit better. And I'm going to increase the amplitude. And now the primary thing is that we want, like since it's moving in the X direction. Yeah, since it's moving this way, like if we look at our, you know, basic simulation, see it's moving roughly in this direction. So what we want to do is we want to take the cloud noise and make sure that it moves, you know, in, in the Z direction. I think that is Z. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do is we can just take the offset in the, so we'll take the offset in the Z axis and we'll do like at frame or let's do at time. So it's slightly slower. So do at time into about three and what that will do is it will make sure that the noise also animates as it goes along. If the Z looks a little weird, try offsetting it in the X axis. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Like I'm not going to play this because you can't, it's too slow. Okay, but you should roughly, if you've done everything right, you should get something roughly like this. Now, if you want more detail, like if I, if I play this or if I just move one frame, this roughly takes about, uh, I don't know, about 10 seconds, about seven seconds. But this is with only 5000 particles. So if you really want a lot of detail into the whole thing, you might have to go a lot higher. So you could probably end up getting like 30 seconds of frame or 50 seconds of frame of calculation time. Okay, just to get like a decent sort of swirly volumetric uh, simulation. Oh, this is not exactly a simulation. We're just turning particles into, into VDP. Okay. But it's a decent enough uh, way to generate, you know, like planetary clouds. Even if it's for a still frame, it's fine. You know, like even if I just take this 
and if we merge it see that doesn't look too bad so even if you want to do like a like a cartoonish planet or even a realistic one and you want like a fair bit of you know noise on top of it and you know cloud detail this is not a bad way to do it like for a distant shot it looks pretty decent and the next lesson we'll take a look at uh, you know that bug scene from unreal 5 